Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to talk about stepper motor controlling again. In this video I will continue one of my earlier projects where I made a stepper motor control panel which is basically this set of uh, circuits here. And uh, now I got a new mechanism which is this uh, linear guide uh, here and I will talk about both things, how I uh, combine these two things together and what are the new features in my uh, software which I uh, wrote for the uh, control panel. So just in nutshell, uh, this control panel uh, is already introduced in one of my earlier videos. You can check the corner uh, there for the link and you can check my uh, previous demonstration. But I will go through all the details again. So I will show you how it works, how the source code is written and why it is written like that and so on and so on. But uh, just uh, if we do a quick uh, speed run over the parts, then uh, here, this is like the control panel part of the uh, circuit. So we have two buttons. Uh, we have a rotary encoder here, which is also, which also works as a button. So we have three buttons in fact. And this is a Nokia uh, display, so this will show us all the information that we need. Uh, the brain here is an STM32 uh, blue pill microcontroller. Uh, you can choose an Arduino as well, but uh, I prefer this device because it's faster and I got more used to it and I got a bunch of this so I can build more circuits based on this. And then we have a TB6600 uh, stepper motor driver. So this thing receives the signals from the microcontroller and there are only two signals, the direction and the pulse or step. And uh, those signals go to the driver and then the driver drives the stepper motor here, which is a NEMA uh, 23 uh, stepper motor. So the new thing here is that uh, we have this uh, linear uh, guide and I will uh, clean up the desk and just focus on this uh, for a while because I want to show you the, the features. And also one more thing which is not really visible but now I can reveal it that uh, we will also use a limit switch here which is now as you can see is switched by this small uh, screw uh, bolted in the side of this block. So what I will uh, do first is I will show you this linear uh, guide in more details and then I assemble everything and I will do a demonstration how this control panel works and finally I will show you the source code and uh, of course I will explain it line by line so you can understand it and you can use the code for your own uh, purposes. So this is my tool or toy depends on how you look at it. So let's start uh, from this side. Uh, this is a NEMA 23 stepper motor. It is a bit more powerful than the NEMA uh, 17. So it's good to use with this kind of uh, uh, setup, so we will have sufficient torque. And then uh, following a part is a sort of a bracket, which uh, holds the motor and connects it to the main body. And uh, then the shaft of the motor is connected to the uh, ball screw with a coupling, as you can see it here. It's a flexible coupling. And then uh, here inside this uh, bracket, there is a collar which uh, just holds uh, the uh, ball screw so it will not move uh, like in this direction and then after that collar there is a uh, bearing inside uh, this black block you might see it there and then uh, we have this nice SFU1204 uh, ball screw and uh, the effective length that we can use is depending on this linear uh, rail inside the middle of this uh, profile and that is uh, 30 centimeters. So the, the length from here to here is 38 centimeters but then we have this block which is uh, 6 centimeters long and then there is a gap here so I can uh, put my finger here and also there is a gap here because this uh, rail here, this thing with the holes, you can see it now, 
uh, that is just uh, 34 centimeters and then uh, based on the size of this block you you cannot cover the wall distance so 30 centimeters is the total distance that you can move back and forth with this uh, carriage and yeah so inside this carriage uh, we have the ball bearing and under the carriage which is not really visible but uh, inside the profile uh, there is also a small carriage which is just the bearing and the car uh, for this uh, linear uh, guide here and uh, then on the other side we have another bearing which just holds uh, the lead screw and then it's inside the block and as you can see this uh, limit switch is screwed on the side of this profile and inside each of these grooves as you can see for example here we have a few uh, nuts and those uh, nuts can slide in this groove as you can see and that's really nice because you can attach things for example uh, limit switches uh, on this profile on this uh, structure so then uh, this was basically the demonstration of the mechanical part so I will assemble everything together and uh, I will show how this thing works and also I will sort of teach you how to make your own stepper motor controller based on this uh, example so I will assemble everything and return to you so I put everything together and the system is ready for the presentation hopefully so all I need to do is I have to connect a power supply for the stepper motor and now I'm just using a simple uh, 12 volt and 2 ampere uh, power supply it's an adapter so I will use that just to connect the power to this uh, guy and then I'm using a simple uh, mobile phone charger uh, just to power the display and the Arduino based uh, microcontroller the STM32 so I turn this on and now you can see there is a welcome display with a message so I will show you each uh, option inside this uh, controller and we will see what is uh, happening so we can set the maximum speed and uh, that is basically determining the speed of this uh, carriage everything is defined in steps per second so this is 400 steps per second but if we translate it to uh, the linear speed uh, that will be four millimeters per second so it's not a very quick uh, speed but it's uh, sufficient for our demonstration and then if I step to the next uh, menu then we have the acceleration and that is steps per second squared uh, so that is the unit of the uh, acceleration and then there is an option called absolute so that uh, moves the carriage in absolute units so you always have to uh, define what is the distance here what is the distance here or here or wherever you want in uh, steps so if you say that uh, this distance corresponds to a thousand steps and then you move thousand steps using this option then it will move there and then there is the other option which is the relative so then it doesn't matter where this carriage is uh, located if you say that it should move relative uh, thousand steps then from that position where the carriage is uh, located so for example here uh, it will move thousand steps and uh, just before i forget the positive direction always has to be defined by the user so by us when we are assembling this thing and uh, writing the code and the positive direction for us is there and i guess that's quite obvious because we have so much free space uh, here so we will move the motor in this direction and I also moved the, the limit switch here so we are just one centimeter away from the limit switch so if you move one centimeter in this direction towards the motor then uh, this will hopefully stop then we have a rotary move uh, menu and that is nothing else than just uh, if we enter this part and we move the rotary encoder then we can move this uh, carriage uh, in the same fashion as we move the rotary encoder or it's more easy to say that the shaft uh, of the stepper motor will mimic the movement of the rotary encoder so then that this is very good for very fine steps and I made a similar uh, implementation 
for uh, buttons. So we can use uh, this button and this button. This is the top, so this will be the positive direction, and this is the bottom, this will be the negative direction. And we, we can move the carriage back and forth. And there is a step size, and I made this to uh, save a lot of time, because if I want to increase the number of steps by a larger uh, portion, then it takes a lot of time to move it or change it with buttons or uh, the rotor encoder because we move one by one. So here I can increase the step size, for example, to 100. So each button press or each click of the uh, rotor encoder will increase the value that we chose on the display by 100 instead of one. So this is, I think, very home, uh, handy. Then this is a new option. So in my previous video where I first introduced this control panel, uh, this homing option did not exist. So now this is included. And what it does, I will show it, but first I want to explain it, that uh, the very simple algorithm is that since we know the positive and negative directions, we instruct the motor to move wherever it is located towards the negative direction with a certain quite slow speed until it hits the limit switch. But that's not enough, because if uh, the limit switch was hit, uh, then uh, the motor stops. And if it stops there, the limit switch stays uh, switched. And that means that everything is locked inside the software. So what I did uh, here is that when it reaches the limit switch, and we can hear and also see that the limit switch was switched, then uh, this carriage moves a bit back until it turns off the limit switch. And then uh, the microcontroller will uh, zero out the position there. So when this moves back to the limit switch and then moves a bit forward to switch off the limit switch, that will be our zero position. So this has to be mechanically defined. So you basically define it by positioning your uh, limit switch. But once it's done, you have a, let's say, global uh, zero position or origin for your uh, carriage, which means that wherever you move, you will perfectly know the, the location because uh, you, you define the zero position. So it's a good idea if you use this uh, thing without any kind of uh, modifications and you start in the middle of the rail, then you just start the homing uh, procedure, then the carriage will move back where it will switch the limit switch which depends on you, so where you place this thing. And uh, then uh, the device will know that, okay, that's the zero position. So wherever you try to move, for example, with the absolute movements, uh, that will be according to the uh, defined zero position. So then that's a very good uh, reference point. And then I added another feature, which is a go-to feature because I uh, discussed with some of the viewers and they were very interested in uh, positioning uh, the stepper motor. So they wanted to have uh, certain predefined uh, positions uh, across, uh, for example, a turntable or uh, also across or along a shaft. So they wanted to uh, stop, for example, here and here and here and here, or they just wanted to go directly to this position, this position or this position. And then, uh, I added, I added this uh, thing because I think this is uh, relatively easy to implement and it's quite a smart uh, thing because it just makes our life easier. And how this works is that you have to make the homing first so you know where is the zero position. And then from that zero position, uh, for example, you manually measure uh, the distances where you want to move. And then you uh, basically translate those uh, distances into steps. So you know that you want to move, for example, 7.5 uh, centimeters, and uh, we know that 100 uh, steps is one millimeter. So we have to move uh, 7,500 uh, steps in order to cover 7.5 centimeters distance with this uh, linear carriage. And I just pre-programmed a few things, uh, a few distances, just to be able to demonstrate this uh, thing. And uh, I, I will show you uh, how this works. But uh, technically, when you will use the code, all you have to do is you just calculate uh, your uh, distance and uh, convert the distance in centimeters to uh, distance in steps. And that's all.
and I will show you how, how it works. And then set zero is another uh, zero point. So for example, uh, that is different from the uh, limit switch because if you move, for example, here, and then you want to move uh, relatively from this position, so you want to define this as some kind of uh, zero, then you can set this position uh, uh, to zero. But this is just some uh, software-based value. So still this limit switch will work, and whenever you hit the limit switch, then this becomes the new uh, zero point. But as long as you work around the, the middle, then uh, that will be your zero point, which you set with this uh, option. And then uh, technically this was all. So I will start uh, moving uh, through the menus which we can uh, work with and I will show you uh, what is what. So the first point is the max speed and I implemented something here. So uh, the thing is that you can enter each of these menus by pressing the rotary encoder and then there will be this uh, symbol and that uh, indicates that we are inside the menu. So then if we turn the rotary encoder then we change the value, but we don't hurt it or don't uh, touch it. But inside this uh, max speed uh, menu, if we press the white button, uh, the carriage is supposed to move in the positive direction with uh, this speed and until we stop it or it hits the limit switch. And obviously now we have a positive number here, so that will result in a positive uh, movement, but in fact, you can change this number into negative number. So if you use it as negative 400, then it will go in this direction with 400 steps per second. So now I press this button and this should uh, move uh, to somewhere. And now you see it moves in the positive direction. And at the bottom of the display, we can see the numbers increasing because that is the position of this uh, carriage. So I can stop with this and it stops. And the stop is implemented in a way that it will decelerate uh, the carriage. So after you press the stop, there will be a small uh, set of steps still uh, done because it will decelerate to zero and it will not stop immediately. If you want to stop, uh, the best thing is to cut the power by uh, disabling the power here. So now we are at uh, 6,514 steps away from, from our starting point. So let's uh, check the next menu. So that's the acceleration. And in the same fashion, you can uh, change it if you enter it. But this doesn't have any extra option, so we skip this. So now we have the absolute. And uh, this is really like you have a scale on this. So you have to imagine a scale over the... Uh, range of motion of this uh, carriage and you move on that scale. So if you have zero here like now and you press uh, start, so you press this button, then uh, the carriage will move backwards to the zero position because now it is 6514 steps away from the zero. But uh, I don't want to go back to zero, so I will increase this number to something and we go there. So now this is the drawback of this thing. If, if you see that uh, the value, since the step size is one, the value increases with one uh, as well. So this, this takes ages if you want to do it like this. So I move back to 314 uh, absolute position. So it will almost go back entirely uh, here. So let's... Uh, press the start button. So you see it goes backwards. <laughs> and it stopped there. So this is perfect for us. So now we have the relative. And the relative, I, as I said, uh, it means that it doesn't matter where you are, if you say it should do 1000 steps, it will do 1000 steps. So this is basically the amount of steps that it will do in any uh, circumstances. So I will just... Uh, we will go to 400, so we are now at 314, so we miss 86. 
So we go 86 uh, more steps. <coughs> and we are there. So this is now the 400 position. And of course, uh, you can define a negative number. So I will do that now. Let's say 50 steps. It will not be very spectacular because this is just a few steps. But then uh, the carriage will move backwards. <coughs> so you saw that it moved that direction. So now we have the rotary move uh, option. So that means that the shaft of the motor or this uh, ball screw will mimic uh, the rotation of this knob. So I enter this and we are at the 350 position. So that's why the number switched to 350. And now I move this clockwise, then this is supposed to come towards the right side of the display. And just let's see. So it moves very, very slowly. Basically it's unnoticeable, but I can see it, uh, that it moves in this direction. So I will keep rotating this and I will speed up the video so you will actually see some more uh, noticeable uh, movement. So hopefully this was uh, visible and uh, yeah, so this is for very fine movements and uh, you could see that uh, you can like very, very precisely position the, the carriage with this. And then we have the button move, which is the same as the rotary uh, move, but it is done with the buttons. So this, uh, the top button will move in the positive direction, so towards this side, and the black will move in the negative direction towards this side. So let's uh, go in the positive direction first. So this goes slowly, but on purpose, because we want precision here and not speed. And now I move in the negative direction. So the carriage moves in that way. So this is nice. So now I redefine the step size to 100 just to be able to move this more significantly. And actually I can explain the step size uh, to you. So now the step size is set to 100. So if I go back, for example, to, to the absolute and I uh, change the rotary encoder, then the value changes by 100, as you can see. So now I can move a lot, for example, to this position, which is 6214. So it will be like uh, 5000 steps away from this uh, position right now. So let's move there. So we are there and of course if I press it again it will not do anything because we are at this position and we are moving on the absolute scale. So I press it and nothing happens, which is the correct behavior. So now let's test uh, the homing part and what the homing does is that it will slowly move this uh, carriage back to uh, the limit switch and then the, this kind of screw on the side uh, will hit uh, this metal part which will switch the switch and after that is done then the carriage will move in this direction again until the switch is switched off and then uh, the microcontroller resets the position to zero so that will be our absolutely zero position so I enter this menu so now we have a message like homing and I just have to initiate it by pressing the white button here. So let's see how long it takes. So it went in this direction. It switched the switch and then it moved back and that was all. So now this is our zero position. So now I can show you the go to uh, function. So in the go to function, I predefined uh, five uh, positions. One is 4.3 centimeters from here. Other is 7.5, then 15.4, 22.3 and 25.4. 
So we will move to each positions and see what happens. And just to see how precise is this, because this was also a question, uh, then I will demonstrate this to you. Uh, the question was something like that. I, I had another demonstration with uh, another kind of structure, but it was also uh, controlled by the Excel Stepper library and the viewer had some kind of concerns about the precision uh, because based on the comment that I performed uh, the thing supposed to move only three centimeters but on the camera it looked like it moved like 3.6 3.8 centimeters and it really looks like that but uh, the library has nothing to do with the precision so this this will move uh, properly so what I do here now is I measure the distance and now, if I squeeze this part of the measuring tape uh, to the block and read the number here, I can see 29.8 centimeters. So now uh, 29.8 centimeters is our reference value. And then whatever uh, is the next uh, number, we have to subtract from, from that. So I enter this menu and uh, I go to the zero position. And uh, since the numbering of the uh, items start from zero, then if I go to the zero position, that's supposed to be the 4.3 centimeters. So for example, if I move to the zero position, uh, which is at 4.3 uh, centimeters absolute distance, then uh, the length of, of the free uh, space here should be 25.5 centimeter. So let's uh, start this and see what happens. So the 4,300 steps are done, so we have to measure the empty space here. And that is 25.5 centimeters. So this is precise so far. But then let's go to the position number one, which is the second uh, item in our list. And that is at 7.5 centimeters. So then the gap between uh, the end of the carriage and this bearing block uh, should be 22.3 centimeters. So let's try it. So 7,500. And 22.3 centimeters. So, so far it's, it's very nice. So now what I want to do is I move to the fourth position, so that's number three, because we started the counting from zero, and that is at uh, 22.3. So at the end, this should be something like 7.5 centimeters left in, in this gap. So let's see what happens. So we are expecting 7.5 centimeters. And that's pretty much uh, 7.5 uh, centimeters. So this is fine. And uh, just to show you that this works in both directions, then if I go to a smaller number here, then that is located somewhere here. So then the carriage should move backwards because we are moving on the absolute scale. So let's uh, just uh, move back to the 7.5 centimeter uh, position. So the gap on this side where my hand is uh, should be 22.3 centimeters at the, at the end. So let's just go to the uh, pre-selected position. So the distance so far is fine because we move in that direction. And then we will see where this will stop. So according to the number of steps, uh, we are at the 7.5 centimeter position. And here, the distance is 22.3 centimeters, which is correct. So it seems like that the repeatability of the movement is quite fine. So I exit this menu here and I just uh, go home. So I move back this uh, carriage to the home position.
done. So basically this was the demonstration. So you can see that the limit switch works uh, properly, the pre-saved positions worked uh, properly, and in general everything works as we would expect. And uh, the distances are also repeatable and they work very nicely. So I would say that this is more or less a reasonable uh, system for controlling your stepper motor based uh, projects. So now you could see basically the circuit part and you could see the mechanical part, but uh, you don't know the code on this uh, device yet. So now what I will do, I will move to my computer and I will go through the uh, code step by step. Since I showed the code in a previous video, uh, some parts I will skip over or just uh, very quickly uh, demonstrate and show but uh, those parts which are new as compared to the old uh, version uh, will be explained in more details and that is basically the predefined positions and how the limit switch is uh, treated so at least watch those parts if you are interested in those parts because they might be new for you or useful for you so let's go to the computer and continue the work there so this is the source code behind the controlling uh, circuit and it's long but it's worth to pay attention because uh, you will understand how this thing works. So there is a very nice uh, library for the LCD that I'm using and you can reach it in this uh, GitHub uh, link. Uh, this person actually has a very nice YouTube channel so you should just uh, search this uh, CBM80 Amiga uh, user. and. Uh, you will see a very good amount of uh, microcontroller related uh, videos and you will really enjoy them if you like to work with for example this uh, Nokia display. So what we have, uh, we have to define the pins uh, for the display so that's what we do here and uh, then I also put the pins here so how they are connected so if you can read you don't even need the uh, schematics because you see that the RST pin goes to PA0, the chip select pin goes to PA4 and so on and so on. So this is how it is uh, connected and then uh, I use this library from uh, this uh, gentleman so you can uh, include it as well and then these are just some standard uh, things that is borrowed from his uh, library. And then uh, I use two type of fonts, one is for the larger and one is for the smaller uh, character, so that's what I have uh, here. And the uh, only thing that you have to make sure is that you have these header files, and these header files have to be in the same folder as your Arduino project file. And then we move to our favorite uh, stepper motor uh, controller library, the Axel stepper library. So we include it and we create the object here. So the PA9 pin serves for the pulses or steps and the PA8 is for the direction so this is how I wired up and uh, furthermore we have a few bunch of pins so these are for the rotor encoder so the CRK, DT and SW uh, pins so these are for the rotation and this is for the switch and then we have two buttons the up button and down button so this was uh, as you could see the positive or OK button or start button, the white one, and this was the negative or down or stop button, and this was uh, the black uh, colored uh, button. And then we have a limit switch and I just have one, so I call it limit switch one in the variables and that is connected to the PB11 uh, pin. And then uh, these are necessary for the rotary encoder, so this is how you determine the direction uh, to comp so you are comparing the previous uh, position of the rotary encoder with the current position and then you see whether it was clockwise or counterclockwise. And then I use a few timers to uh, use them as sort of uh, debouncing and then uh, also I have another timer uh, thing for, for the button. So this is all what we have here. And then we have even more variables which can be a bit intimidating but uh, they are actually quite easy to understand. So what we see here is we have the value of the rotary button whether it is 0 or 1 so we know if it uh, was uh, pressed or not. 
Uh, and then we have a bunch of variables which are treated by the ISR, so the interrupt service routine uh, in the uh, microcontroller. And then uh, you can actually just read what is what. So I put uh, the names here in a very nice format so they tell what they are uh, doing. So for example, the highlighted one is uh, storing the absolute steps uh, for, for the stepper motor and th this will be used in the move to function and this stores the relative steps and this will be used in the move function and uh, this is very important sometimes I forget these but uh, this should be volatile why? because uh, this value changes in the uh, ISR so in the attach interrupt uh, uh, hand event handler basically so since this variable can uh, change in that ISR uh, we have to make it uh, volatile so the compiler will know that these variables uh, have ha have to be stored somewhere else uh, then this is the stepper size so this is what i uh, demonstrated to you uh, as the step size so in the beginning it's one but if you want to uh, move to some very far position which is several thousand steps from the current position you might want to use a larger step size so when you increase the the number uh, it's, it's just easier to increase it by uh, steps of 100. Uh, this is just uh, keeping track of the position and this is also and actually these two variables are used uh, for updating the display uh, you will see it how it is used. And we have a bunch of booleans because this is how I constructed the menu so whenever we rotate the rotor encoder inside the menu then uh, based on our selection the software will know whether we are in a certain menu or not and that is just simply uh, determined by the uh, status of these or one of these variables because uh, at the time there's only one which is changed to true so and that is basically the activated menu and then uh, we have a buffer and that is only needed uh, because we want to print some stuff on the screen so this will store the characters in the setup file, of course, we have to make all our pins uh, to inputs. So this is what is done here. And uh, then we have to read the current position of the rotary encoder. So when you move the rotary encoder for the very first time after you powered on your microcontroller, then uh, th there will be already a, a previous position for the CIK and DT uh, variables. Uh, because they were read in the setup file. So when you uh, rotate the rotary encoder, uh, the rotary encoder will already know the direction because we saved these uh, va values. And then of course we have an interrupt uh, routine uh, defined for the rotary encoder, uh, but it's only for the rotary encoder. The buttons, uh, the two buttons, the black and white buttons, and also the switch on the rotary encoder are just pulled because it's more easy and also it's uh, easier to adapt uh, this uh, code to an Arduino which has limited number of uh, interrupt pins especially Arduino Nano or Arduino Uno where you only have I think two of these pins so then you can easily use it on those microcontrollers as well uh, this is a very standard uh, stuff so I just uh, described the speed the maximum speed and the acceleration for the uh, stepper motor and then I initialize the uh, LCD and what I do I initialize it and then I clear the content of it and then I have this function which is called print LCD and I just print this welcome message so that you could see when I first uh, plugged in the USB cable of the uh, microcontroller so then this is the loop and uh, it's uh, not too much messed up but uh, just a little bit so here uh, there is a lot of if conditions and uh, I will tell you what but uh, what basically happens here is that if uh, this is true then we update the position and this is changed somewhere for example if we rotated the rotary encoder so the rotary encoder will actually change the uh, value of this variable to true and then in the next iteration of the loop uh, we will enter this function and we will update the, the menu and the same is for the value so for example if we increase the uh, speed of the stepper motor then uh, upon increasing the, the value of it 
uh, this variable will be changed to true and then in the next iteration of the loop uh, the update value function will run so you will see the next value uh, which you updated uh, just in the previous moment uh, in, in, the, in the microcontroller and the same for the selection that is basically when you uh, jump into the menu or uh, select the value so then the selection is updated and then stepper.run is always pulled and what happens is that uh, you have uh, this loop here and that iterates uh, basically infinitely so this loop is technically just a while and then one in parentheses or in the argument of the while so what happens here is that this uh, stepper.run uh, always checks if uh, we gave any comments uh, for example move or move to and if we made some comments and we uh, told the library that it has to do a certain amount of steps then this stepper.run will make a step and in the next iteration of the loop it will do another step and because of this you are not supposed to use delays anywhere in this code so actually I wrote the whole code in a way that it is a non-blocking uh, code so you will never see any kind of uh, blocking uh, anywhere so there are no delays because of this so the loop has to run uh, efficiently and quickly and what we do here is that we check the buttons so there is a switch on the rotor encoder we have the white colored button and the black colored button and we also check the limit switches so all these technically four buttons or switches are checked uh, within the loop so we are polling them instead of uh, using them as interrupt means of course it might be better using interrupt pins but it works like this and uh, if you check my other videos for example uh, the video that is up in the corner uh, I explained how to do for example the polling and also for example the interrupt based handling of the buttons so you can learn it from that example and you can decide whether you want to change this code or not so here uh, after doing a step we read the new position if we did a step of course then uh, this number uh, is read into or put into this uh, stepper position variable and if that position is not the same as this uh, value which we saved previously then we have to also update the position and the value of the uh, steps so based on this uh, we will see continuously how the uh, position of the carriage or the position of the shaft is uh, changed but since we are printing on the LCD this might slow down everything so if you suspect that you are hitting some kind of upper boundary uh, for the speed it might be because you are trying to refresh the screen too often and uh, that might be not so good so it might be that this this thing is slowing down your movement if you are trying to move very uh, very fast so then just uh, remove this part so so the next part is a very very large part uh, because that takes care of the wall uh, menu system so what we do is that uh, we start with the menu first so I go to the end of, of this part which is this part so first of all when we start the stepper motor uh, and uh, we start the uh, microcontroller then uh, the rotor encoder is basically in this part so why because we haven't entered any menu yet so what happens is that uh, we read the CLK uh, value and then we just uh, make some kind of comparison and then we move uh, into this two different kind of if else uh, statements so what happens here is that if we moved in uh, for example a positive direction and we are below this uh, number 9 uh, then we increase the menu counter and that will mean that we move to the next uh, menu or the next option inside the menu otherwise if we are at this number the next number should be 0 because we move in, in uh, some kind of circle so after 9 
it's not 10 which comes but 0 so we start over from the beginning of the menu and here this is I this is what I said in the loop that uh, this is changed so the next iteration of the loop will know that the menu has to be uh, updated so for example previously we were looking at the acceleration of the uh, stepper motor and now uh, we will look at the step size or, or something like that based based on the value of the of the menu counter uh, variable and then this is basically just the same but when we rotate it in counterclockwise of course we decrease the number uh, inside this variable and of course if we hit uh, 0 then the next number won't be minus 1 but it will be 9 so we start from the top of the menu and of course we have to uh, let the Arduino or the code know that uh, it has to update the display and then we save the current status uh, of the rotor encoder as the previous status so now this will uh, be compared in the next round so then uh, now we can check the rest of the of the code here so if the stepper max speed selected uh, value is true as you can see it here then uh, whenever you start to rotate the rotor encoder then uh, something will happen with the stepper max speed uh, variables value so if we moved in the positive direction then we increase the value of this variable and based on the defined step size, which is 1 in the beginning, uh, we increase the, the number and then we save it inside the variable. However, if you move in the negative direction, then uh, this part of the code sort of uh, stops us to decrease it under a certain value. But then if we are larger than uh, 2, then we can decrease the number. So we can reach down to 2, but that's all. Then if we selected the acceleration, we do it in the same way, sort of. So I haven't uh, put any limits here. So if you move in the positive direction, then you increase the number. If you move in the negative direction, you decrease the number. And of course, I haven't told it in the, in the pre previous menu here, but uh, here there is a, another variable changed this is a boolean variable so the value changed becomes true so in the next iteration in the loop uh, this will be updated then uh, if the absolute steps is selected then we change the absolute steps so this is how the uh, stepper will uh, navigate for example so it will know that it has to go to these uh, absolute steps and uh, then we have the relative steps it works in the same so move the clockwise we increase the value move counterclockwise we decrease the value and there is no limit on plus or minus because you can move uh, relative minus so you will move clockwise or counterclockwise depending on how you uh, wired up everything and define the positive and negative directions and so on uh, then uh, this is the rotary stepping so this is a bit different because this uh, part is when you rotate the rotary encoder and the shaft of the stepper motor will mimic the motion of the rotary encoder so what happens here is that if you moved in clockwise direction then uh, we move relatively from the current position so first we read the current position of the stepper motor and we add the step size to it and that is put in this kind of uh, variable here so this will be passed to another function as you see it here and uh, this will move the stepper motor to this uh, position and if we moved in the negative direction with the uh, rotary encoder then the same happens basically we read the current position but we uh, subtract the stepper step size uh, value we save it in this and then we tell the stepper motor to move to that uh, absolute position uh, button stepping does nothing so we, we skip this because we are focusing on the buttons there and then uh, this is just the step size so what happens here is that if we moved in the positive direction we increase the step size and then here we limit the minimum value of it uh, and otherwise if we are above the minimum limit then we decrease the value of the of the step size and of course we have to let the code know that the value is changed. 
Then we have the go to function. So if the go to is uh, selected, then uh, we go to a certain location. And what happens here is that I told you that I defined five uh, different kind of locations. So we have to uh, make sure that the selection of the location goes in the same way as we navigate in the menu. So here, if we are still below uh, four, so the stepper go to location is smaller than four, then we can increase the value. But otherwise, if we would move about that value, we have to make it zero. So after four, uh, zero comes. And the same happens in the other direction. So if we are not uh, at zero, we can decrease the value. So if we are standing at three, it can be two, it can be one. But if we are zero, uh, then after zero, it is not minus one, which is the next number, but four. So the top of the list. And we have to know that we change this value. Then in the homing, we don't do anything because uh, we just uh, activate the homing with a button. Then if we define a new uh, zero position, we also don't use the uh, rotor encoder. So we just press the button and that will uh, define the new zero position. This is the print LCD, which is called in the setup part. Nothing else, it's just a random message. Uh, then this function checks the rotary button. So once again, we are polling the button. So we are checking it in every iteration. And what happens here is we read the value. And if the value is zero, then we step in the function. And you have to know that this zero might be one with your wiring. So make sure that you either use the same wiring as I use, or you just check what is your rotary button value uh, when you are uh, not uh, pressing it. So for me, when I press it, it goes to zero. And then uh, we measure the time here. Uh, inside this, this is sort of a debouncing, so this helps us to know the elapsed uh, time. So if the elapsed time is more than one second, then we move into the switch case uh, stuff. So what happens here is that if I check the, if I press the rotary button, uh, then in any case here, we change the value of this variable to the opposite. So if this was selected, then it becomes unselected. So it goes from true to false. If it was uh, not selected, then it becomes selected. So it goes from false to true. So inside this function, we are uh, changing the values of these uh, variables from true to false or from false to true. So then based on the position, which is set up by the rotary encoder, uh, we have this 0, 1, 2, up to 9 uh, positions, uh, we do something. So for example, in the 0 position, which is uh, used for the speed, uh, we can enter. But also, I made this, that if we exit and the motor is moving, this will stop the motor as well. Uh, so that's a nice option. And then this will update the selection as well. So once we press the button, Either we put that uh, mark there or we remove the mark so we know that we exited the menu and then uh, that's a nice visual feedback. And then uh, this is basically the same. So if the acceleration is selected, then it's, uh, it becomes unselected or if it was unselected, it becomes selected and then we update the, the value of the selection. Uh, in the absolute steps, it's the same. Uh, we flip the variables value, and also if we exit the menu uh, during the movement, it will stop the motor. This is just some safety stuff. Uh, same happens with the relative steps, so it uh, flips the value of the variable, and then also when we exit, uh, we stop the motor. Then if the rotary stepping is selected, then uh, we change the value selection and also uh, the value changed uh, variables. Uh, same happens when we are moving with the button. Uh, then when we change the step size, uh, we just update the selection. When we uh, select the homing, also just the selection is changed. With the go to, also just the selection is changed. And then uh, when we go to the 
final uh, menu, which is the set to zero or reset. Uh, we don't do anything else. We just uh, make it true because uh, we don't have to flip between two directions. We just always write to uh, one uh, uh, status and then it will be changed somewhere else. And then uh, finally, when one of these cases are performed, uh, we save the rotary time uh, too. So we update the value of this with the current time. And then we also uh, refresh the selection in the, in the menu. So the menu changed uh, becomes true here. Then uh, we navigate through our menu. So when we rotate the rotary encoder, then this number will change. And based on this number, we have to print something on the screen, which is the, which is the menu, basically. So I won't explain all the parts, but what happens here is that uh, based on the number of the menu counter value, which is just changed with the rotary encoder, uh, we, we enter one of these cases. And then I just explained the first case. We change some font. Then we erase the previous text, which was uh, on the top of the screen. And then we print the new text. And then we change the font again. This is a larger font. And then uh, with these two lines, we actually print uh, the value of the stepper max speed in this case. Uh, on the display, and that's all. And then the same happens with all of these different menu uh, items, depending on which menu is called. And then uh, at the end, uh, this is something which is always printed. On the very bottom of the screen, uh, we see the position, which is always the current position of the stepper motor, and uh, that is always printed. And then after we change this, we set the menu changed uh, value back to false, so we will not enter this again upon the next iteration. So we will only enter when we change the menu for for the next time. And then the update value is similar to the menu part here, but we are now updating the values. So what we see here is that we again check the menu counter, so where we are at in the menu, and then uh, for example if we in the zero, first we set the speed uh, inside the access stepper library, and then uh, we set the font to a different value, and we go to the middle of the screen, erase the part, and then we update it with the current value, which is the stepper max speed. And that's all. And all uh, these are the same, but we are using always the corresponding uh, variables. So when we are updating, for example, the relative steps, then we print the relative steps on the middle of the screen, and so on and so on. And of course, here also we have the same uh, strategy. So we select some uh, part on the bottom of the screen, and that is erased, and then we update it with the uh, new value of the stepper position. And again, we change everything to false here regarding this value changed uh, variable. So the next iteration of the loop will not uh, enter this part of the, of the function. Then we have this update uh, position uh, part. This is called uh, in another part of the uh, code. But what happens here is, uh, again, it, it's just the same as this part uh, up here. Uh, it updates the position of the stepper motor. So this is always giving us uh, an information about the current position of the stepper motor. And then we have this update selection. And uh, then what this does is we change the uh, font to a large font size. It's the same font size as the number we use to print the value of the certain variables. So what happens here is that uh, if one of these uh, variables become true, uh, we print uh, this uh, symbol as the cursor. So the user will know that we entered that menu because there will be a symbol in front of the number, which will be changed. And uh, at the very end of this, which means that one of these variables became false, then uh, we just erase uh, the symbol. So we know that we exited that uh, uh, menu item, and we are not modifying the value anymore. So that's uh, quite uh, straightforward. And of course, uh, we have to make this value selection uh, variable false, so we will not enter this again. 
So let's see what happens when we press the up uh, or the white button. So you have to make sure that uh, you have a certain value assigned to your uh, state when you press the button. In my case it's 1. And if this time elapsed, 300 milliseconds, sort of a debounce, then we check which menu is selected and we do something based on that. So basically we just check if this is selected, then I just uh, define the ridiculous amount of uh, steps which uh, actually represents a sort of an infinite movement. Uh, this was the easiest way as I could uh, program it in a, let's say, lazy way. So if this happened, when we were standing inside the stepper max uh, speed uh, menu, so the first menu, then uh, the stepper motor will be instructed to move this much steps, so technically infinitely uh, will move. If we were in the relative steps, it will be instructed to move relative steps. Uh, it will be, if it was in the absolute steps, it will do absolute steps. And then if the homing is selected, and this is one of the new uh, parts, so pay attention here. So what we do here is that uh, we are reading the limit switch. And what we do is that for me, the one is when the limit switch is not pressed. So while uh, the limit switch is not pressed, we are staying inside this while loop. And what we do is that uh, we are moving in a negative direction with these 400 steps or 4 millimeters per second. And we, we run the stepper motor. No acceleration, nothing. We just move backwards towards the limit switch. And once this is switched to zero, we exit this while, and then we enter another while, because then this will sort of park the carriage. So what it will do, that as long as this is uh, zero, which in my case means that the switch is pressed, so it's activated, then we move in the positive direction with a slightly lower speed, so two millimeters per second, and we move uh, inside this while until uh, this doesn't become one. And when it becomes one, uh, then we exit this while and we reset the current position to zero. So this is our absolute zero in terms of number of steps and also in terms of the physical limits set up by the limit switch itself. And then another update, so pay attention again please. Uh, if we use one of the uh, go to menu, then we, we are inside this part. So what I did, uh, this is what I explained in the demonstration. Uh, if we are in the menu, then we check that number between zero and four. And these are the predefined values. So if I want to go to the zero position, that is this amount of steps. If I want to go to my other uh, position, which is a predefined step, uh, then I selected the one and pressed the up button at that number and so on and so on. So you can see here, what is basically done is I just came up with some uh, numbers here. I entered this and I used the move to function. That's very important because the move to function is the absolute uh, movement and this is how you have to use it. And uh, always use this after doing a homing, after doing this, because then uh, they will be in connection with each other. And yeah, I just uh, wrote this note down. So for me, this uh, ball screw and uh, the wall mechanism and also the micro stepping that I use uh, results one millimeter uh, per hundred steps. So then I can just divide everything here by 100 and I know the values in centimeters. And uh, if you remember the demonstration, uh, that was pretty much precise. And then uh, we just uh, update the time and we exit this uh, branch of the, of the if uh, conditions or else if conditions. And then uh, if we selected the button stepping, then what we do here is that we start to move with the uh, buttons. And that is not checking this uh, condition because we are outside this if. So this allows us to keep the button continuously pressed and then the stepper motor will move according to the button 
pressing. As long as we keep the button pressed down, we increase the uh, position with the stepper size, and that is put in the move to function. So we will always move uh, to the absolute position, which is always increased by the uh, step size. And then we have to update the value changed. So the value on the display will be updated. And I'm not going to go very details with the down button. It does the same as the up button, but in the opposite way. So this will make everything stop, as you can see. And we also save the position, so we update uh, the position. And if we are outside this uh, big if uh, here, the timing related if, then the down button will move in the negative direction. So from the current position, we subtract uh, the step size and then we move there with the absolute uh, moving command, the move to command. And of course, we update the screen. And then we have uh, another limit switch uh, part, which is the global uh, limit switch part, because here, uh, this is for the homing, which is uh, defined by the user. So the user said that uh, they want to make a homing, so they do it from the menu. This function is constantly polling the limit switch, and then when it becomes zero here, but it depends on your wiring, but for me, when it is zero, and uh, we enter this part first, and we stop the motor. So this will be a slight deceleration, and then it's done. And this also makes sure that you cannot press the limit switch several times, so it uh, sort of removes uh, any kind of uh, bouncing of the signal. So when the limit switch is switched, uh, this thing is just performed once. So we stop the motor, and then we immediately step into this while, and as long as the value of the limit switch is one, we move in the positive direction. We move in the positive direction in the same fashion as we did it in the homing, and we just uh, switch the switch off and we reset the position to zero again. So this is more like the safety uh, part. So for example, if you have another limit switch uh, at the other side of the carriage, for example, so at the maximum position, uh, you duplicate this function. So you make limit switch pressed two, and then you update this and this limit switch to limit switch two. And you put it somewhere here, uh, in the loop, in the main loop. And then you will have two limit switches which will uh, stop your motor in both ways. But if you have the maximum limit switch, then you have to remove this because uh, that should not become the zero position. And with this, uh, this was technically the last uh, function in this uh, code. So this was all. So once again, the big updates, or not too big updates, but um, significant updates was uh, this improved homing, let's say, with the parking uh, function. So it not only just switches the limit switch, but it switches it off as well with this part. And also with the go to function, uh, the, the user can uh, predefine several uh, positions and move there based on the selected uh, menu item. So yeah, this was all. Uh, don't forget to visit my website, uh, check the link in the description because the wiring and also other resources, for example this source code, can be found there. So if you want to download the code and use it for your own project, just uh, go to my website please. And also you can find other things on my website, so uh, look around if you, if you want. So I hope that this video was useful, I hope you learned something, and see you in the next video.